Hi, it's Retro Product Review and Teardown Time. And today I've got the classic Fluke 27 multimeter. Here it is. Great eBay score. I picked it up for 40 US dollars. Practically brand new. Buy it now. Can you believe it? <laughs> Damn right I'll buy it now for 40 bucks. Uh, I love this meter. It is a classic Fluke meter. It's been around for decades. It is their original super rugged waterproof multimeter drop proof three meters drop proof uh waterproof to i don't know a meter or more uh just like the fluke uh 28 series 2 which you've uh, seen me torture test and fluke was still selling this puppy for many decades right up until they released the superseded model the uh, 28 series 2 this is the fluke 27 it's also available as the fluke 25 um, there's just some functionality differences it's only got two buttons instead of uh, four so the fluke 27 is the one to go for and it's available in several variants and different colors this is the latest model which is cat 3 input rated it's because this thing was designed before the well this model was designed before the cat standards were even thought of and came around. Uh, so this new model with the yellow uh, casing plus the charcoal uh, fascia panel on it, this is the latest model, which I believe is the Cat 3 rated model. If you get just the yellow one or just the complete charcoal colored one, that's the older model and you'll find that doesn't have Cat 3 ratings. Now, I'm not sure if they've actually changed the circuitry in there or they've just re-rated it and rebranded it, tested it and rebranded it as the Cat 3, but this is a really great meter to pick up on eBay. Why? Because it's not only super rugged and it's a fluke, but it's also pretty darn accurate as well. It's only a 3200 count, so basically a three and a half digit uh, multimeter, but it's got 0.1% accuracy. Normally a three and a half digit meter, you know, 3200, 4000 count, whatever, you're only gonna get 0.5 or 0.3 or maybe 0.2 if you're lucky. This one's got 0.1% DC volts plus one count. So there's not much play in that final digit there at all. It's a pretty darn accurate meter and it'll last you a lifetime. And yes, it does have a lifetime warranty. There it is, terrific. So let's take a look at it, do a very quick summary review and tear down. Hmm, love it. Now the first thing you notice about this meter is that it is big and here it is compared to the 87.5 which is already a pretty decently big multimeter as multimeters go. It's, but it, technically it's probably just a fraction longer and the same width and it is well basically bigger than it's uh, the 28.2 which is its new um, counterpart. So but of course this one's got the holster of course this one does not come with a rubber holster and it's still rated for three meters drop can you believe it because uh fluke famously claim that it uh contain that it has uh plastic twice as thick as their regular multimeters and impact resistant polymer plastic in them so um a really super duper rugged meter and the other thing you notice is that it's bloody heavy that's about three quarters of a kilo. Let's get the scales out here. Give the 87.5 a go. It's a smidge under 600 grams there. And what does this suck away? 673. So it's heavier and it doesn't even have a holster. Hence all that thick plastic. And there's probably a lot of metal in these things too because they are um, very immune uh, to external EMI and let's have a look at and there you go it's basically the same as the new 28 2 so it is a big chunky meter but I just love it and the tilt-in bail on it you can see here is really quite remarkable it's huge and wide I absolutely love the thing there's no way this sucker is going to fall over when you're using it beautiful and on the bottom of it here we've got some uh, nice rubber strips down here to stop it moving around your bench really quite nice i like it and we have a removable battery compartment this is technically the fluke 27 slash fm now 
this is an interesting uh, variant. You'll see this, sometimes it's written on the front of the meter here. Sometimes it's branded Flute 27 slash FM there. And I believe what FM is, is it stands for for military. In other words, it was a specific model uh, they, they released for the military. I believe it's an absolutely identical meter in every respect. And as for the front panel, of course, this is the new charcoal and yellow model. So it is Cat3, specifically Cat3 input rated, 10 amp jacks, 3200 milliamps, and uh, volts, ohms, and diode jack with standard uh, spacings and shrouded, of course. And the range switch itself, though, I really love the range switch on this thing. Not only does it feel absolutely beautiful and it's designed to use with big gloves on and things like that so you can easily switch it but what i love is that it's basically split down the middle there's two off positions there and but this half is basically all ac so you got volts ac millivolts milliamps amps and microamps and ohms happens to be on this side because well it's got to be somewhere so basically if you switch it in this direction you know you're getting dc none of this pressing button to change to uh, AC and DC mode crap. I love it. You just move it all on one side or all on the other. Functionality wise, it doesn't have a huge amount. Unfortunately, it's just got standard min max, the fluke touch hold, the relative mode, and uh, the range hold. Um, but there's no capacitance. Capacitance wasn't around on multimeters when this thing was designed and released. But it, um, it does have a fast updating bar graph display down to a couple hundred microseconds or something like that. So really super quick uh, bar graph. But if you just want a super reliable, super rugged multimeter just to measure your traditional volts, ohms and amps, this one's hard to beat. And on the ohms range here, even though it's not written there, it does have conductance or nano siemens range. You just hold down the uh, range and just press the range button twice and it puts it into nano siemens. Great for measuring leakage and stuff like that. Now there is a bit of a delay when you turn the thing on there. There you go. It's a bit disconcerting at first. You think, oh no, I've run out of battery, but no, trust it, it'll eventually turn on. And the display is, even though the digits aren't very large, the contrast is actually very, very nice from pretty much any angle. So there it is side by side with a Fluke 87. And as you can see, at this particular angle, the contrast is much better on the old Fluke 27, but there's no backlight uh, capability at all. Just be aware of that. And from the opposite angle, it still beats it. Now let's check inside the battery and fuse compartment, metal threaded inserts on all four screws, lovely. And it just lifts up, completely O-ring seal, because this thing is uh, waterproof, dustproof, oilproof, everything proof. I love it. And, you know, it's, there's nothing fancy here at all. It's just a loose 9 volt battery, but it does have the foam on the bottom to keep it in place. So it seems to work reasonably well. Yeah, it's just your traditional battery snap, but they've got the spaghetti, or is that heat shrink? That looks like, oh, sort of not really heat shrink tubing. It's like rubber tubing or something like that. It feels feels very rubbery. Anyway, they have done that to protect the wires so they don't get pinched and stuff like that. And if we take that out and get in here, ta-da, we can get access to the two HRC fuses. And they're 440 milliamps and 11 amp fuses for the two ranges. And the nice little fuse cover there stops them from uh, coming, from, you know, vibrating out, popping out and coming loose. I like it. But probably the thing that most impresses me about this meter is the battery life. From a standard 9 volt battery, it has got a rated 1000 hours battery life. Yes, folks, four digits. Can you believe it? Oh, it's a stuff of wet dreams, really, in a multimeter. Beautiful. I don't know another multimeter on the market that matches this thing. And this thing is what, upwards of 20 years old? Now, unfortunately, there are a couple of more downsides to the meter. The uh, diode range only goes to two volts maximum, so you can't test white LEDs with it. And the continuity buzzer, unfortunately, the bar graph is going there, but it takes some time. So it doesn't even pass the slow scan 
pro probe test. Look at that, right? It, it takes some time, unfortunately, but it is fully latching. And well, I did get this thing on eBay, so have I bought a dud? Let's check out the resistance range first. I've got my resistance standard here, 0.005%, 10K, bang, 10K, you better believe it. <laughs> Let's try 1K and see what we get. Ah, spot on. And let's try my EDC MV106 voltage standard. This is a 3200 count meter, so let's put it on 3.0 volts, shall we? And let's give it a go. Sp ah, spot, practically spot on. There we go, 3.00 and two, one, nine, no drama whatsoever. Let's take it all the way up to 10, not a problem. And let's take it to 300 millivolts. Ah, look at that, least significant digit. Nothing doing there, spot on, absolutely spot on. Fantastic, winning score on eBay, beauty. And I'll use my Keithley 225 current source. That should be 100 milliamps. And it's close enough. Well within spec. Well within spec. 10 milliamps. Yep, spot on. Let's go down to 100 microamps. No, sorry, one. That's, that's one milliamp. There we go. 998. Beautiful. Certainly close enough. Let's go down to 100. Yep, spot on. 10 microamps, beauty. Just another thing it doesn't have, no input jack alert for amps. None of that fancy modern stuff, blah. <laughs> Warranty void if seal broken, screw that. And the screws in this thing appear to not uh, fall out when you unscrew them, but they do eventually pull out, and yes, they are. There is no metal threaded inserts for these ones, but you should never have to open the case on this. There's rubber uh, O-ring grommets down in there, so just be careful of those. If you want to maintain the uh, waterproofness of this thing, you have to be extremely careful what you're doing. So let's crack this puppy open, and, whoop. There's our O-ring. <laughs> Oops, just be careful of that, but ah, look at all that shielding. And you'll notice the fairly deep ridges around there that go right into the top part of the case there, and there's good blast protection there. So if this thing goes kaboom inside, it's not going to escape very easily with those high walls and the O-ring. Very safe meter. And the input jacks here are solid metal uh, posts with shake-proof washers under there and screwed directly into the PCB. But the fuse PCB, as you can see, is on that vertical riser board down in there, which is uh, soldered directly onto the board. So the board is uh, got these cutouts in them, like little tabs, which then feed through the main PCB here, and then they're soldered directly onto the board. It's rather novel. And as you'd expect on a fluke, the soldering quality is absolutely first class on that riser board. But I guess uh, the only issue with that riser board is that it could potentially, uh, those solder joints could potentially uh, crack with uh, when you insert and remove those fuses because all the pressure and the flex on the board. But I think they've done their homework on that and uh, it's going to be rigidly held in place. So that shouldn't be an issue. And you'll notice on the side here how it's also shielded, but then there's uh, breaks in the shield there for all the calibration trim pot adjustments. Love it. And one of the big features of this meter is it's very high um, electromagnetic immunity, hence all the shielding and everything else around it is really a very nicely shielded unit. So let's pop that off and uh, it, it's not easy to take this thing apart. It looks like we're gonna have to take the jacks out to get the whole board out. Um, it's a multi-step process to take this apart. Hence, having the adjustments on the side there so you can adjust and uh, cow this thing without having to um, take disassemble the whole darn lot. 
And the funny thing is, even when you take these screws out on the top of this shield, you can't get it out because there's actually an embedded threaded nut in the shield itself. There's two of them embedded in there, which are unscrew from the bottom. So I've got to take this whole unit out before I can even get that darn shield off. And one interesting thing to note is that there is a bit of wiring on these input jacks. I mean, this jack absolutely goes nowhere. It's got no components or anything on the bottom, but it's got that wire flowing off down further into the board and likewise for this one, but there is that um, input hybrid and that uh, ceramic hybrid resistor there um, across jumping over from there. But apart from that, they do actually um, have the wires coming out from there. And this one's actually been pinched. So I'm not sure what, uh, what happened there, but uh, that one certainly has a bit of a rough life there. But once you get those four screws off for the input jacks there, it does look like it just pops out. Okay, that's probably a connector for the LCD or something. And yep, that's exactly what I thought. It was just a 0.1 inch uh, header there. It just required a bit of force to pull that out. And I found something rather interesting already. And that is Fluke 27. There it is, Rev 5 of the board. The interesting thing is this was actually redesigned in 2003. There it is, copyright 2003 Fluke. PCA Digital, Rev, well, they've got a manual Rev 8 on there, and uh, it looks like a fairly modern uh, display processor down there. I'm going to, uh, that's been pro, like microcontrollers. So I'm going to whip that label off and have a look what we have down in there. So it's saying version 2 there, and I think we might find this is a TI MSP430 like they use in the new model flukes. Let me get that off and we'll see. And bingo, I was right. MSP430 F437. There you go. So they decided to redo this sucker. Maybe they couldn't get uh, the ASIC chip or something that uh, they used in the original model. So they clearly redesigned this uh, display board down here. It'd be interesting to uh, compare with an original Fluke 27. And I used to have an original Fluke 27 a long time ago, but unfortunately I don't actually remember and don't have any photos inside, but they've clearly redesigned this in 2003. And you can see the uh, classic design Fluke mechanism there with its uh, four arms going like that. That thing is never going to wear out. And they've used a Kyocera brand uh, PCB mounted buzzer there, spared no expense. This looks like a programming uh, header for the MSP. 430 and there's nothing on the bottom so I won't bother taking that uh, board out but I like it it's held in with uh, six shake proof washer uh, screws there and you can see the zebra uh, strips on the bottom there to connect through to the LCD so that's all sandwiched in place I rather like that design and yes they haven't uh, skimped on the shield in here have they folks I mean look at that it's almost completely enclosed except for the uh, penetration for uh, several things that's the uh, buzzer on the bottom that meets up with the buzzer in there so it just pokes through and for the uh, range switch they're just holes straight through the mounting holes of course there you go but apart from that it's wow you know <laughs> that is pretty well shielded and that looks like classic old school fluke in there. Let's check it out. And these are metal threaded inserts, as I said, that have captive nuts on the shielding on the other side. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. But there we go. Ta-da! We're off. Wow, here we go, folks. This is old school fluke here. Check it out. They've even got the cutout for the main fluke ASIC down on there. <laughs> A classic wafer type switch here. <laughs> What an absolute classic package, folks. Look at that. It's the Fluke 700-112. That's their internal part number. This is their uh, custom ASIC, which contains a whole bunch of uh, stuff, which we can actually have a look at because it uh, is inside the manual. But it's the classic flat package. They haven't formed the uh, leads at all, and they haven't got all the leads coming out. The unused leads are just trimmed off and this one's actually it's not like old stock or anything it looks like it was manufactured 
13th week 04 if that I assuming that is a date code it certainly looks like a classic uh, date code there so they were still manufacturing this ASIC in this classic non lead formed package I love it. So that aspect of the design I don't think has changed since this thing was first released. And there you go, we have a recent, uh, fairly recent anyway in the scheme of things, 1997 date code. And there's some uh, high voltage isolation slots in there, they've really gone to town. You can see the little, look at the little guard trace wiggle around there on that device. I'm not sure what that is, it could be a uh, voltage reference, but they've added that little guard trace in there, they thought they had to do that bit of attention to detail, some uh, classic style uh, cylindrical uh, tubular style or whatever the name is for those uh, trimmer caps. There's some more trimmer caps down here, there's a variable, a couple of variable resistors there and that is the uh, hybrid. There's the uh, ceramic hybrid there which would be the uh, resistor voltage divider. And these are actually very high voltage withstanding Teflon uh, dielectric capacitors, hence, because they're high voltage, they're still in the high voltage input uh, part of the circuitry, hence the high voltage isolation slot underneath it there. These particular ones are rated to 1700 volts. And I just love the old style radial formed lead resistors there. They used to use these in the old uh, Fluke 70 series way back. If you've got an original one of those, crack it open and you'll see uh, exactly the same thing. I, I love it. They really haven't uh, changed much when they updated this thing. And that Maxim ICL 7611, uh, that's a uh, ultra low power uh, dual op amp. And the wafer switch system here is an absolute thing of beauty. It's got uh, dual wipe contacts as you can see in there, top and bottom. Oh man, you don't see these much anymore. That's just wonderful. You couldn't buy that thing if you tried. And if you want to see that uh, fuse riser board up close, there it is. You can see some isolation slots in there. There's some sort of plastic retention clip in the center, uh, which is kind of weird. And check out, we have a little ferrite on that input lead. And what that thing's gonna do is just take the edge off any um, uh, surge, any input uh, surges and when the fuse blows. And that device down in there is an IFC 23817. Can't find any data on that. Uh, if we looked at the schematic, I, uh, by the two pin nature of it uh, there and the TO92 package, my guess, and the guard trace around it, um, my guess would be that is a voltage reference. And here's our milliamp input a current shunt, 4.995 ohms, 0.25 percent there it's a biggie it's a couple of watts and right next to it there you can see the classic uh, bridge rectifier and diode protection to ensure that the uh, fuse is going to burst and not that big um, uh, current shunt resistor on the milliamp range in uh, gross overload conditions and of course the other limitation of this meter I forgot to mention and one thing you won't find on here is a true RMS converter chip this is not a true RMS voltage meter, it's only average responding. And we've got no less than five MOVs here for input um, fast surge overload protection, but they've got four of them in series here to get the increased voltage and then it would uh, dissipate the energy across the four devices instead of having one big monster one. And the uh, black device there is a PTC thermistor for the slower overload condition. And they've gone to the effort to go, well, we need some internal shielding as well, so bugger it, let's put on a big internal right angle metal shield. And they haven't skimped there on the battery wires, look at that. They've put little crimp connectors on the end first and then soldered the whole lot in. I love it. Now if you have a look at the teardown of the more modern uh, 28 Series 2 I did, you'll see the huge difference in just the construction of the input. Um, uh, circuitry and the fuses, none of this riser board stuff. I mean, this is actually fairly clumsy. I mean, it's ultimately well engineered in terms of, you know, how they've, you know, actually assembly of it, but it's just, you know, it's just a clumsy design. I 
don't necessarily like it from that point of view. The, uh, the more modern Fluke 28, Fluke have certainly learned a lot since they uh, designed this. I mean, but this would have been the same design way back when this Fluke 27 first came out. And you can see a 10.5 written in there, and I do think that uh, my particular unit here is um, 2005 vintage. So it's only seven years old. Not that bad at all. Now, if we have a look at the schematic here for this main chip, they call it an AP25. This is the classic Fluke proprietary um, chipset here, which has a whole bunch of stuff in it. Of course, it's got the ADC built in. It's got active filter, buffer integrator, input uh, network um, selection input, so it does the auto ranging and all sorts of stuff. And you can see the things surrounding it here. Let's have a quick look there's that um, ICL 76 double one uh, ultra low power op amp up there with a JFET look at that love it part of the range switch here and you can see why this thing's gonna get a thousand hours battery life because look it's driven by a 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal um, I don't know if they multiply that inside but it's certainly not going to be running very fast at all I love it and uh, there's our voltage reference uh, down there 1.23 volts and then there's a uh, adjustment uh, trim pot there to set that which goes in uh, as the voltage reference we've got some more filter and um, some ADC uh, sampling stuff around here and active filter components buffer integrator components and that and here's the digital output which goes off to the digital board as you can see there's a small data and address bus there it's only a four bit address bus and it's got various other stuff to end of conversions and clocks and all sorts of things which go off to the um, MSP 430 processor board which gets the data out of this thing and displays it and it even gives you a little uh, description here of what's inside this custom analog I see and as you can see here it says that U1 also contains digital circuitry for the state machine control over the AD decoding ROM so it's it's got internal decoding ROMs and state machines in there which allows it to do all the auto ranging and the analog to digital converter and it tells you the AD conversion is accomplished using a modified dual slope uh, the conversion method uh, can be described as a charge coupled multiple slope technique a series of 10 minor conversions occur every 40 milliseconds each at one tenth the desired resolution without taking time for an auto zero phase between conversion these these minor conversions or samples as they are called in the following discussion occur at a rate of 25 per second hence uh, that's why they can get the fast response on the bar graph display at lower resolution compared to the screen so new samples are taken every 40 milliseconds, 10 sam samples are summed to produce a full resolution digital display for the 3200 counts. There you go. So that is the basic operation. Here we go, if we zoom out here, that there is the basic oper operation of the ADC and the state machine. I love it. And that's all inside that custom Fluke ASIC, which they've had for many, many decades and no doubt they have a patent on and if we have a look at some of the specs here you can just see how awesome these are for a 3200 count multimeter I mean 0.1% plus one count on DC volts it drops to 0.2% uh, plus one counts on the ohm, ohms range it gets higher outside of that of course it's still 0.2% uh, on the conductance range there plus 10 counts of course diode only goes to 2 volts and the AC is you know not the best of course um, but that's all right and the current uh, where's the DC current it's not that spectacular at 0.75% plus two but the basically the ohms and volts are excellent specs for a uh, three uh, for a basic a three and a half digit multimeter and if you have a look at the specs here of course it's designed to survive almost anything it's uh, waterproof to one meter down here it's uh, shock and uh, vibration and water resistant and oil uh, waterproof the whole thing thousand hour battery life it's absolutely massive um, and it's designed to operate uh, contemporarily operate down to minus 40 degrees C for 20 minutes I love it so there you have it that is the new model I guess you could call it uh, original fluke 27 the yellow and charcoal one 
as opposed to the original design which you would have seen which you would see if you take it apart would not have of course the new um, TI MSP 430 processor in there to drive the display so this is an interesting mix this meter of uh, you know modern sort of you know a re they've retrofitted an old design they kept a lot of stuff the same I mean the classic ASIC on the bottom there they were still able to manufacture that so they're still using it way up to 2005 and and uh, presumably well beyond that right up until they uh, discontinued this model and it's basically the classic design which you'd pro and the wafer uh, range switch here is probably exactly the same design they used in the original one and uh, you know the vertical uh, radial resistors there absolutely classic design interesting blend of old and new so um, if you want to pick up one of these uh, fluke 27s which I highly recommend you do if you can get one uh, cheaply Ch do try and get the yellow and charcoal one the more modern one because it's going to last you a lot longer purely because it's not well you know 20 years old or something like that but uh, by all means um, pick up the older model as well because they're as long as it's uh, still in good nick and the screen is um, still working well and hasn't faded or anything like that do pick one up because these are an incredibly robust and very accurate and very reliable basic 3200 count three and a half digit multimeter but just do be careful what you pay for one of these things. I paid 40 bucks for this in practically brand new condition. So, you know, I, I think I got a pretty good fine, but there's still some people selling these for a couple of hundred bucks, you know? So they do tend to hold their value quite well, but you, I have bought a few of these in the past at very rock bottom prices. So if you just keep your uh, ears to the ground, you might be able to pick up one of these puppies. I highly recommend it. If you don't mind the uh, size and the weight, of course, and the lack of uh, some function functionality you get on more modern meters, it really is a good, reliable meter to have. I highly recommend it. So if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EEV blog uh, forum. And as always, if you like these sort of teardowns and multimeter stuff, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.